Tell me about NIL in the, in the Ivy League. So, I mean, I haven't done en- enough. This is just my thoughts, really. I think that they're going to have to do something, right? So what happened this year, five of the best players in the Ivy League left and went to other institutions. So if you leave if you leave Yale and you go to Georgetown, is Georgetown that big of a drop-off in terms of an academic institution? And they're also going to pay you to go there, whatever they're, they're paying their kids? No. And you might start making decisions based on, hey, listen, Georgetown's still a pretty good school, but they're also paying me this amount of money too. Um, for some families, that money is transformative for their for those for those families, right? Like, and so it's hard to tell a kid no, don't look at that. When I know the biggest thing when I was at Harvard, we would always tell people, don't think about the next four years, think about the next forty years, right? You know what? It's hard not to think about the next four years if they're going to pay you pretty good money as a 19, 20 year old, uh, you know, student athlete. My guess is that at some point in time, the smart people in the Ivy League will have to figure out whether they start giving scholarships and they have to start, you know, creating collectives and having to pay kids, which would be a really hard thing for those institutions to want to do. But if they do do it, think about getting a Harvard education and somebody paying you and these schools have the resources to go out and create a collective that no other school may not ever be able to get. So it could be a game changer for them if they do it. It's also a game changer if they don't do it because it it could really hurt them as a league. 